Get in there. Stay away from that stinger. Get in there. Stay away from that stinger, Secretary. Come on, Mr. Attorney Close. General Malfeasance. Oh, Take his ass to court. No, keep your strength, Secretariat. Oh, no. Nope, nope. Now's the push. Hold him in contempt. <laughs> what happens in Cobalt's Fight Club stays in Cobalt Fight Club. Oh, okay, that's just, that's dirty. <laughs> it's Cobalt's on WebDM. <laughs> oh. All right, Jim, mm. we're talking kobolds today. Oh, yeah. First off, is this not yet another race that was wronged? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> yeah. what, do you, what, do you, what, what do you what do you think is the, the reason behind that? I, so I did a bit of investigation on that. Reading through all those, refreshing my memory about like what kobolds are and, and you know, like how they've evolved over the additions and everything. And get to that part about curl mock and you're like, first off, girl, glitter girl's a real ass. And just like, I mean, like not up there with Corella or, you know, like the elf gods. Uh, the investigation I did suggests that the kobolds did something to warrant mm -hmm. Garl Glittergold trying to trap their god in a cavern and eliminate them that they might have actually like messed with the gnomes before gnomes existed. Because in, at least in like D&D &D lore, gnomes are born from gemstones. And right. like the, I guess the kobolds found them first, or at least that's the way it is in, I think, uh, Forgotten Realms. Um, backing it up a bit, I reading that is just like, all right, we got a, uh, a you know, a servant of Tiamat, right? Mm -hmm. And Tiamat is kind of one of those deities that I see at least as like, they're not like actively looking to promote domination or whatever in the world. They mostly just want to be left alone and, and not bothered and just sort of venerated by their, uh, you know, the dragons or whatever. And it's only like being messed with by others that drags them into these kind of cosmic conflicts. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> that, incl that include real active worship and like beseeching right. them. And it's a trend in Dungeons and Dragons that there are evil humanoids that have evil deities, which invariably at some point got into a conflict with the god of the good peoples. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things where I, I think they want us to look at it like from this very black and white heroic fantasy perspective where it's like, yeah, they're kobolds, they're evil, they're, they're sort of like these wicked little dog lizard things. Yeah. And their deity is, is sort of similar and they've always sort of hated gnomes and, but to me, like, it just doesn't, uh, it's not working anymore. And so I like to either change those things up or accept that interpretation as like, yeah, that's what the gnomes want you to think. You yeah. know, <laughs> of course. That's, yeah. That's their propaganda. I mean, <laughs> right. You know. You always have to demonize the enemy so sure. you can fight them. Sure, you know? but it does sort of paint the picture of all these ethno-religious subgroups in a DD and d world just like fighting each other in various religious conflicts. Oh, <laughs> and wonder where they got that from. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so that out of the way, Kirtlemach, you know, is, is the god of uh, kobolds and is this sort of bitter, uh, grudge-carrying kind of, you know, uber kobold that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, informs all of the, uh, all the others. But in revisiting kobolds, I found that I was like way more interested in them yeah. and, and found more potential in them than I think I'd probably given them credit for because for me, I'm, I'm goblins, like all day long goblins. Right, right. You know? Well, I mean, and, and looking at them down through the, the additions, mm -hmm. they have changed. I mean, because they used to be more goblin-y. Right, well, they used to actually be goblins, right? right? They were related to goblins, uh, zvarts, gremlins, and some others. In, in original D&D, &D, they are listed in the same entry as goblins. It's yeah. just like goblins and kobolds. They were scaly, sort of dog-like. They always had lizard elements to them, but they weren't like draconic. They weren't like actual lizards. They, they had the blood of the dragon in them. Right, they right. That they is... weren't all Targaryens. <laughs> right. That's a distinctly like uh, Wizards of the Coast era D&D &D invention mm -hmm. of, of turning them from these sort of like dog lizard things to actual lizard people. Why they didn't make them just like a subgroup of lizard folk uh, or something, I'm not quite sure, but I mean, it seemed like in third edition everybody had draconic ancestry, so I just figured it was part and parcel of the whole thing. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it was It was all the fad then. You, know, right. you, know, you got some scales, you could speak draconic, you know. Yes. You, you, it gave dragons a, a, a built-in to into the system. Absolutely. Uh, servitor. Right? Absolutely. And you know, if it hadn't been for that, we wouldn't have gotten pun puns. So, you know, there you go. Uh, pun, pun. God of all cold Oh, pun pun. <laughs> 
What <laughs> level is he again? Like third, second level? He is arbitrarily high. Uh, he has, well, yeah, he's looking like second or third level, if I'm remembering right. He has arbitrarily high stats. And That's right. pretty much whatever special abilities he wants because of, like, all the different books that you make. Anyway, the right. wonders of third edition that you could yeah. uh, get up to there. What I like about the kobolds that presented in fifth edition mm -hmm. is that, to me, they are not this aggressive evil humanoid sort of uh, species there we just want to be left alone we, you know our, our preference would be to just like tunnel and have our communities and 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 a really like if there's even people around who would like let us live here and not try to kill us we would be fine with that and it almost suggests a world where all of these evil humanoid uh peoples out there if they were just like talked to and brought into the fold that you would have this integrated society of all of the intelligent peoples of a D&D world instead of this uh, animosity seemingly based on divine origins but also suspiciously looking like, well, they just look weird and different, so we're going to kill them kind of thing. It's just part of that D&D tradition that is, if you, if you scratch beneath the surface, it is just kind of like, this doesn't feel right. We're, we're, we're going <laughs> we're to break into the homes of these small, diminutive yeah. little creatures and, and they're desperately trying everything they can do to keep us out, but we're here to take their stuff and wipe them off the face of the earth. Jim, it almost sounds like, it, it almost sounds like you have a dream there. I, well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> and, in my, it, and in my campaign world, that's how I treat the uh, kobolds uh, as well. So, so you know, down <laughs> at the table of brotherhood. It, it's worth bringing up because if you're going to present these, uh, whether it's kobolds or goblins or orcs or whatever, as a people. Yeah. They have a culture, they have a society, and I love the fact that they go into such detail on cobalt society, both in the ways that it's different, but also in the fact that they have strong social bonds, right. that they very much care about their tribe, their community, mm -hmm. and will do everything for that, it, to the point where they're sort of like isolationist and, and, you know, we don't want anybody near us, but that seems to be more based on their experience in the world, and the fact that they are this small, you know, diminutive, they, they don't have great power, they're not commanding giant empires, they're just sort of like, we want to live our lives, not, <laughs> not be messed with, and, you know, the fact that they keep getting messed with, that they're in wars with goblins, that they, mm -hmm. you know, commit genocide on gnomes and all that other stuff, <laughs> is uh, a consequence of these divine conflicts that make life for the people in the D&D world just suck. So I try. I do something about that in my own games. And there's other reasons why the world sucks. It's not God's. <laughs> it's usually right. their own fault. <laughs> well, you kind of see how they they've changed over the years. Right. Uh, you see what they kind of are now. Yeah. So like, people wanting to play kobolds. How can they take this information and form a good concept out of it? You oh, know, sure. Like something that's worth playing. Right. Like right. Something right. that is a little different. I think for me, I would start with the idea that there's got to be a very good reason for your kobolds to be outside of their tribe, and, which is an extended family and, and sort of a communal uh, type living arrangement mm -hmm. where they're not, you know, they don't really care about the sort of nuclear family. It's about the greater unit. And so... Um, Sounds like a typical D&D origin story is coming up here. I know, right? Well, in this case, it's sort of like, yeah, well, adventurers killed all of my people. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, you know, and I... You know, but it's at the same time, it's like, I, you know, what am I going to do? I'm going to go live with some orcs and goblins? Like, you know, these humans, these dwarves, these elves, they, they typically come in here and, and uh, are, you know, are, are bad. But, gosh, they their cities are better than an orc camp, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and so you could see it being like... Yeah, these people are responsible for, like, say, the death of my my tribe, my people. But maybe this kobold like sees that humanity isn't monolithic. That the people that came and and killed all their loved ones are not the same people that would welcome them in in a village and be like, yeah, of course, we you know we need somebody who can help us with this thing. And you're you know small and industrious and willing to help and be part of a group. You can see like lone kobolds in the world. You know, if, if uh, people from other cultures or, or species or whatever recognize them, you know, the, the premium that kobolds place on togetherness, cooperation, and, and sort of group survival, you'd be like, yeah, of course we want kobolds over here. Like, these mm -hmm. guys are real team players. And, you know, once you establish the fact that you're going to treat them well and not, like, pick on them and make their lives worse, then they're like do or die. You know, they're, mm -hmm. they're uh, you know, great companions. And so I think, like, maybe that's a good end. You know, if you're playing a kobold, then, you know, that group cohesion, that cooperation, the teamwork of a D&D &D party is kind of like a surrogate tribe. 
Yeah. I would avoid the sort of like I'm a mascot or kind of cutesy. Mm -hmm. uh, that's just my personal preference, though. Um, yeah. And would go for more of the, you know, a person looking to belong uh, yeah. is how I would play it. Yeah, they could also, uh, may maybe the whole tribe wasn't wasn't destroyed, but maybe they were rejected by sure. the tribe for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. They, you know, a misunderstanding or maybe they did steal something right. or whatever. But yeah, they were cast out. So now they're looking for a new family, a new yeah. tribe, a, a bit of redemption. A bit of redemption, yeah. Or maybe it's like they're they're just sort of a, a, a black sheep uh, of their people and they do not get along. And they there's something about this kobold where they're just like, man, they'd rather be by themselves just doing their own thing mm -hmm. and, and not worrying about it. Uh, you know, maybe they uh, practice a different kind of magic than the sorceress magic that kobolds usually practice or maybe they're touched by a different divine power than than Kurlmok and and that scene is this uh, you know bad or wicked or or, or somehow uh, you know an influence you got to get rid of mm -hmm. so like, like a warlock of girl glitter, glitter gold <laughs> <laughs> like a cursed gnome <laughs> finds a piece of fool's gold or something like that and that he doesn't understand who he's who he took power from uh -huh, uh -huh. but well, now it, now you're trapped you always keep treat them like uh drow and elves right mm -hmm. and service elves and like where kobolds and gnomes are the same people and it's only their different experiences of life and exposure to different magical you know whatever's uh, influences that have like changed their shape but they're still these underground small miners and subterranean dwelling kind of peoples and that's what i like i, I like to sort of see all of those um creatures as, as similar mm -hmm. uh whether they they have like a common origin and then diverge later on or they just like have learned to get along and at least like well we have no idea what's going on underneath us but you know these these people have their own integrated society that just happens to be underground mm -hmm. and you never really uh, you never really see anything about it so <laughs> yeah as long as you don't go down there it's fine right people, yeah people who go down there so them don't come back right exactly the line is blurred as opposed to say with goblins where goblins i feel are like firmly in the we're just sort of like wicked creature you know, little monsters that, yeah. um you know you can you can sort of like make as player races and sort of integrate into the world but looking at kobolds again the second time i'm like man these, these are much better fit uh and i really liked that about them i was, I was surprised to yeah. how much i was like oh yeah i'm like i'm glad i revisited this because i usually just write off kobolds and don't even think twice about it I, I can't shake the idea of a of a cobalt barbarian. <laughs> I don't know. Like you know me, I, I love I love tiny love bar, like yes. tiny rage filled monsters. Yeah. Like you know, like barbarian halflings are, are right <laughs> right in, right here in my heart place. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, just the thought of a, a tiny little angry cobalt. Yeah. Like I mean, it's penalties and all. But, penalties and all. Yeah, I mean, but, sure, right. But it fits, right? You know, mm -hmm. they're they've got that. You know, I'm stop picking on me. You know. Well, I mean, even the entry says it's like they usually like want to be left alone, but when they're like kind of put in a corner. Yeah. Well, nobody puts baby in a corner. <laughs> <laughs> that's when the beast comes yeah, out. That's when the beat, the teeth, the teeth, and the fa the, the claws come out, and you know, uh -huh. it's, it's it's just a. 30 pound ball of fury. Right, right. You maybe do like a battle rager barbarian and then it's just like they're covered in spiked armor and mm -hmm. punch like, daggers. Yeah. <laughs> just be spikes. They just put spikes through their skin. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, you go full like Mad Max Thunderdome. Uh -huh. and it's like, is that, are those shoulder pads? Like, no, that's, that's just no, his shoulders. He just, like, he just did that. Like, <laughs> baby is really intense. Yeah. That's it. I'm going to make a cobalt name Baby. baby. <laughs> So I, I, there's so many different uh, you know ways to look at kobolds. I, I love the like the juxtaposition of a strong melee fighter with uh, with the sort of like the small diminutive uh, kind of stature. Mm -hmm. I think they make really good rogues, you know, uh, just because the, um, the the pack tactics that they get is really nice uh, for that. But just it's it fits with their. You know, they're very industrious, very mechanical. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, 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 uh, their layers are filled with traps and they're very good with sort of like excavation and mining. And to me, that sort of like speaks to a rogue where yeah. a rogue is very good with their hands. They're very sort of technical minded. You could maybe see him being like an artificer or something if you sort of like reflavor some of their abilities. Uh, but well, especially if it's more uh, less less like mechanical or machinery and it's more of like the more natural artificer of combining things yeah. to create a, a you know they they figured out gunpowder by just 
mm -hmm. ramming you know ingredients together. Yeah, yeah. So um, you can see them like amateur chemists and, yeah. <laughs> and you know the, well, like, by, tri <laughs> by trial, chemist by trial. I like using the uh, uh, sort of like small races as a character concept for like powerful magic users. Yes, you know just because I from number one love Willow uh, and and we hope that the sequel doesn't suck. Yoda is another right. Oh like, yeah, judge me by my size. You know. Um, <laughs> and so I, I like the same with like a kobold where it's like, oh yeah, you just look like a little rat thing. Like I'm not going to pay you any attention. And then, you know, the next thing you know, they're unleashing powerful magic that, you know, if you're going to go that route, then I probably would make them a draconic sorcerer and just be like, yeah, you're going to have to deal with this flying kobold, <laughs> you know, yeah. eventually. And, and, uh, Is that an erd? <laughs> right. No. No. Didn't have wings before. Right. <laughs> Uh, and so, like, those are playing with, like, the concepts that are in uh, sort of, like, Volos and more mainline kobolds. Um, mm -hmm. But I like them in Land Between Two River. I have all kinds of, like, kobold is just a, a, a race that you would pick if you want to play a small lizard folk. Right, mm -hmm. you don't want to be a larger lizard folk. You want to be like a bearded dragon lizard folk, and I would just be like, oh, play a kobold and maybe swap things out if you wanted to do that. But I also like them as in their more traditional uh, TSR era incarnations of like diminutive dog lizard people, um, and even more weird stuff of just their earth spirits. The first time I ran into uh, kobold wasn't D and D; it was the Quest for Glory video games. Yeah, and you have to in the first one. There's like a barren son that's been uh, transformed into a, a bear or something, and it's a kobold that did it. And the kobold just like lives in this cave. And the only reason it did it is because the barren son came in there, and messed with it, you know. And you have to like distract it. You don't necessarily have to kill it. You just have to like distract it long enough to free the prisoner and then like get out of there. Ever since then, I've seen them less as a stand-in for a low-level mob type monster that you fight and more unique solitary creatures that have a strong uh magic you know strong innate magic and a connection to the natural world and so i almost see kobolds as like fey creatures that inhabit old mines and old cellars of abandoned houses maybe they're you know just leftover earth spirits that uh you know magicians would conjure uh, into a mine to make sure the miners were safe and if as long as they gave it uh you know a portion of you know the, the coal that they found or whatever you know i don't know then things would be fine but if they disrespected the mine spirit then yeah, it's going to cause cave-ins, and there's going to be noxious gases down here. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they take care of those kind of things. Yeah, you don't want to know where those gases came from. <laughs> you certainly do not. <laughs> uh, and so, do you know what a kobold eats? <laughs> that was where I was familiar with kobolds from. Of course, kobold comes from a Germanic myth, and in that, there are all kinds of different kobolds. They're just like another name for a, a spirit or a fairy or something like that. And so in that sense, you could make them sort of like Dobby's. There's sort of yeah. like house spirits, domesticated fae that, uh, you know, mend your clothes and patch up the roof and tend the fire at night. And, you know, they're, they're your house monsters, you know, yeah. <laughs> they, you treat them well and, and, and don't uh, get in their way and you'll never know they're there and they'll take care of things for you. Mm -hmm. But, you know, don't, don't curse them. Don't, you know, don't, uh, they've got weird, maybe weird social taboos you're not supposed to, to break or something like that. Um, and then if they do, then you get a leaky roof and yeah. you find your, you know, your fire's cold in the morning and you got to restart it or your the dishes aren't done. The dishes aren't done. Or your dog gets the mange or, you know, something, you know, so I mean, dog finally gets fleas. Never right. had fleas before. Don't know why. The fleas are a kobold delicacy. Easily. Right. Yeah. Easily. <laughs> it's like caviar to them. Do you, I mean, do you have a place for kobolds in your worlds or do you really, you don't really. I, I, you, know, I, you know, I was just thinking about this and like in, at least in um, Starward Bound, I haven't really used used kobolds. Mm. I just, it, it's, it's, I, I think I'm kind of like you. I've just always kind of like gone more like goblin, orc, whatever standard fantasy. But now like as we're talking, I'm imagining like I want a nice proud kobold race on a planet. Here's how, here's one thing. They're small, yeah. right? Yeah, they're small. They take, they don't need as much air. Right. They don't need as much food. They uh -huh. don't weigh as much. Their ships can travel faster. What if they are the asteroid miners of yours, right? They're not bound in any one place. They travel in maybe like Ooh. big, like, maybe like abandoned dwarf ships or something like that. Ooh. Because I can see them being like, because they're small, because they don't take up as much, as many resources. And because if they need to, they can like breed really quickly to replenish themselves. Mm -hmm. They can, you know, change their gender if there's too many men or not enough women or whatever yeah. to like balance things out. They're self-sufficient, yeah. you know, they eat their own eggshells. 
you know, if they need to. So to me, they speak to like, like maybe slightly reskinned of a, of a people that explore the stars and yeah. mine the resources that are out yeah, there. Yeah, the ultimate scavenger survivors <laughs> right, out, right, in the, right. out in the void. Uh -huh. All right. Like that's like I can kind of see that if only because they're kind of small, but yeah, I can also see them where um, maybe their planet was destroyed and that's Ooh, how yeah. it started. Yeah, they they literally went out on a chunk of planet. Maybe they didn't even know. They didn't even know. Yeah, because it was just like an earthquake or something. Yeah, there, there was a big earthquake <laughs> and then everything got really quiet. And it started right. getting cold. <laughs> yeah, you know, and they finally go to the surface. There's nothing. There's just and nothing. So yeah. They, they 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 travel in their asteroid until it reached another group of whatever. Yeah. yeah I like it. Yeah. All right. I, I'll put them in. Cool. Cool. They'll, I, meet, I, they'll meet them soon. <laughs> I'm sure that my party will just start killing them into. Oh sure. Right. Yeah. And it's just like, once again, you are the assholes. That'll happen. Yeah. That will happen. In my in my street, sorry guys. In my streets. <laughs> in the street of spells campaign, kobolds are um, a a group of elemental spirits or or fey creatures that that have been compacted by like basically imperial sewer mages mm -hmm. you know the the uh, court magicians who are responsible for keeping up the sewers in the city have just like yeah summon these fey creatures that live down there and take care of things deal with leaks and change out pipes and scrub the walls and most people never know they're there but if you travel through the undercity which is extensive they're the ones there keeping things going and yeah, they, they take care of the trash. And they're just another type of gutter fairy yeah. <laughs> that's a part of the uh, urban landscape. They're, they're the ones, though, that are keeping that city really moving. Yes, absolutely. Because, uh, <laughs> you all will get backed up <laughs> if very they get much. pissed off. <laughs> uh, and in that sense, I usually have them depicted as either just like grumpy old men, but really small. And they just look <laughs> like two and a half foot tall, yeah. <laughs> just like uh, just uh, bitching and <laughs> complaining. Yeah, but damn it, they do good work. Uh, and they all wear like you know the little like, caps with a little candle on it, or they have like big corn cob pipes, or not quite like the wow level of kobold, but more like the um, <laughs> grumpy, you know, mm -hmm. grumpy old man kind of kobold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Always bitching about their about their on time bonuses. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then in Lamb Between Two Rivers, they look like all kinds of things. Sometimes they're they're lizard. They're actually like lizard people and live alongside lizard folk and uh, dragonborn, who sort of comprise the reptilians uh, of the setting. But other times they're mole people. You know, some wizard somewhere down the line took moles and something else and was like, "Here's mole people." And you know, or dog or fox people. Like a lot of times, I'll give them very animalistic features. And so mm -hmm. there may be vulpine or canine and, and the like. Uh, maybe they're actual homunculi and they're just like enough of them and they can recreate and reproduce themselves, but they are thoroughly magical creatures that mm -hmm. were uh, invented by someone for some task and now they just like burrow underground and get really upset when they're bothered. <laughs> just like these little clay golem things. Yeah, yeah. They like take a piece golem. of their clay and another clay and mash it together and make a new one. To make a new <laughs> one and then like, yeah, and then they all have like, say, animal skull heads that they use and, and you know, they're, I, I wouldn't change much about their stats, but they just look that way. Yeah. Um, especially the mole people. I, I, I got on a real kick one day about them all being mole people. <laughs> <laughs> like they look like naked mole rat kind of things. Uh. And then of course there's the big hole, which they all speak with a southern accent but there's no more kobolds at the big hole because they all died it's all right oh. slot ate them all and that's well, you know I mean, slot's <laughs> gotta eat too <laughs> slot's gotta eat <laughs> anyway <laughs> so like I, I think they're just like conceptually they're really cool yeah and you can reskin them into a lot of different kinds of creatures um but like stats wise i'm not loving them you know, I, I I do not like the strength penalty. Like that's the big killer for me. If only because it's like I don't like the int penalty to orcs. Mm -hmm. um, I think it goes against the kind of ethos of fifth edition. Yeah, uh, all, all bonus, no negative. Yeah, but at least orcs get two bonuses. Though, at least, right? right yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, would you think that uh, another? plus to something would uh, offset that. I mean, they, they tend towards sorcerers, so I, like a, a, but a plus one charisma doesn't seem... It doesn't seem right. right. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. seem right for them. Yeah, I, I think, well, number one, if I'm thinking about adding stuff to them, I'm or, definitely or adding... I can see con, yeah. right? Like, I see them uh, having a constitution, even though they they keep talking about how they're weak and and whatever. But they're hard. But they can be hardy while still being weak. Right, right. right? They can be hardy. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, certainly. And you know, if you live underground and you're you know you're surrounded in these sterile kind of like environments where you have to do your own agriculture, like be self-sufficient, then you would think being more hardy would be an asset. I can see them also being an intelligence boost because they're supposed to be clever and, and good trap makers mm -hmm. and and have an understanding of like engineering and, and structural integrity and stuff. So I could see maybe a little bit of an imp boost there. 
but I'm thinking more along the lines of proficiencies. Give them miners tools, masons tools, uh, come up with another proficiency for like trap making tools. Mm -hmm. um, that's the one thing, and now that I say it out loud, that like fifth edition doesn't really have, which is like a way for you to make your own traps. You know, like yeah, I'm sure yeah. you could come up with something using this, the uh, you know the things in the DMG, but like putting that in the player's hands might be interesting. You know, that's interesting. So you could like do like a tool proficiency, you know, that gives you access to the ability to craft traps, and then I would just use the crafting rules, but maybe like not as extensive, so it doesn't take as long to craft them. Well, yeah, I mean, if you're just talking about like a tripwire or yeah, you know, like a like a like a, a deadfall or you know something you just, like you that, you just yeah. understand how to oh we can we can prop a boulder up between that and hook yes. it to this. Yeah, if it's just like digging a pit and putting like a canvas over it with <laughs> yeah. covering it with a layer of like light dirt that's one thing but like a say swinging door that leads you know that has like mechanical elements to it and counterweights mm -hmm. and all that stuff then that's probably a combination of mason carpentry right uh you know a, a generic engineering skill which mm -hmm. might just be an intelligence check but i'm talking more like snares mm -hmm. uh, and, and quick traps that you could set up in a minute or two yeah 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 okay so instead of that minus two strength uh, if since you don't like it what uh, is there some options that maybe if, if if a player out there wants to and the dm's like oh, they don't like this though yeah yeah they still want to be i if i were running it personally i would do one of the two i would either say all right you don't get the strength penalty but uh as a kobold your max is eight right you're not going to have that 20 that most mortals have you know you're 18 still great <laughs> you're still strong as kobold you yeah. know uh but it's not the you're never going to be as strong as an orc or a you know a, a human even at the same time like Goblins don't have that problem. Halflings don't have that problem. Gnomes don't have that. So it seems weird to single out kobolds as this small, you know, creatures that are extra weak. Mm -hmm. And maybe I wouldn't, or maybe I wouldn't represent that by strength, but by whatever the opposite of a strong build is. Mm -hmm. Like say weak frame. Weak frame, yeah. And it's like, yeah, you just can't carry as much. The mm -hmm. the modifiers for encumbrance for you are different. Maybe they're, you know, a, a third less or half. Even. Yeah, you can and still swing a sword pretty strong. Yeah, yeah. But you can't do it with a pack on your back. Yeah, don't you can't carry around a lot of stuff. And so, like, it, one of the things that I liked about uh, kobolds and sort of prior editions was their affinity for dire weasels and, like, a strain of lycanthropy that, that like, dire weasel lycanthropes were a... A thing amongst kobolds and so dire wear weasels dire wear weasels yeah okay. <laughs> and so you can see like there's all kinds of burrowing creatures that they might domesticate to act as pack animals and beasts oh, yeah. of labor and things like that badger you know badger moles badger moles <laughs> and, and dire uh dire wolverines and, and uh -huh. weasels and all kinds of burrowing critters that uh they would say like yeah you know we're weak but we also have all of these vicious animals <laughs> that mm -hmm. we uh, use to fight for us. Maybe they accidentally find like a Zorn and right. manage to like <laughs> yeah. put a collar around it and uh -huh. actually use it. I mean, yeah. that it, would be, you know. Why wouldn't, yeah, well, they feed it all their, you know, all the stuff that they don't use from their excavations yeah. and, you know, it, it cleans around. up. It, it's a walking trash disposal. <laughs> I mean, come on. Everybody yeah. should have a Zorn. Come on. Um, and it eats all those gyms that have gnome souls in them. Oh. <laughs> eats them before they can be born. <laughs> Their other abilities though, of course, they're small. Yes. 30 foot movement. Right, right. Uh, which at least they didn't reduce that. Um, right. They have dark vision, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and now we're, we're, let's get to the one that seems to divide a lot of people. Which yes. is the grovel cower beg ability. Yeah. Which I personally, I love it. Yeah. And this but, is the reason I love it. Yeah. Yeah, it can be because they're weak and whatever. And it's like, oh, they're, oh my God, don't hurt me, please. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and some people might not like that. Yeah. People have said they don't like it. Sure. Right? <laughs> but when I taught self-defense, one of the things that we would teach people mm. is to keep your head about you, but to put forth the impression that mm. you are not. You're supposed to act. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. because an aggressor will lose focus on what they're doing when yeah. you do that. Because mm. they're like, oh, I got them scared. Yeah. And that lets you and maybe others <gasps> have a chance to get them, right. which is exactly what this ability does. Yeah. And so when I, the first time I read that, I was like, oh, that's perfect. That's great. Yeah. I love yeah. it. It's, it's a distraction. It's I a mean, distraction. And, and it's a it's a mechanical way to represent your enemies underestimating you. Exactly. Right. And in that respect, I really like it because it's often difficult to play that specific flaw, right? Mm -hmm. and, and unless you have a DM who's like really role-playing their monsters in combat and really trying to get inside 
uh, their creatures' heads and say, like, okay, this is how this group of enemies would act in a fight, as opposed to just, like, me treating it like it's a game and I'm going to play it as it's a game, um, then I can see that ability working really well mm -hmm. because you could have creatures that completely ignore this little thing. Is this even a... Is threat like is, is this your pet? What is this? It's gonna take a shit, right? <laughs> right. And going instead for the bigger threats, right? And, and then this way, there's some mechanical oomph to it. You have a reinforcing of the sort of like role playing choices that you're making. I'm sympathetic to the people who are like, I don't want to play a character that's an unheroic, you know. Mm -hmm. And and this is an ability that doesn't say that doesn't scream like in your face heroism mm -hmm. that other kinds of D and D uh, options have. But at the same time, it's like that's okay, we have plenty, <laughs> you know, there's yeah. plenty of other options, and you can reskin this, yeah. so it's something different. Well, I don't know though, Jim, is yeah. it more heroic to get scared and run away, or more heroic to get scared, drop to your knees, and beg for your <laughs> life? <laughs> thus distracting your enemy. <laughs> well, that's true. I'm just saying. That is true. There is a, there's a weird heroism in just being like, please don't kill me. <laughs> right. You know? As opposed to, you could just run away. You could just run away, right. Uh, and so, it's I, a different I, strain of cowardice. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. You gotta that's use very it. True. You gotta use very it. Very true. And it can easily be reskinned yeah. as like a, uh, help me friends, I'm, you know, I'm being attacked. Or, or, or a war cry. A war cry. Or, or, yeah. or let's get them. You, know, uh, you know, it's a, number one, it is a great way to get uh, meleeers into combat with the enemy you want to fight so that you then benefit from your pack tactics, which to me is the redeeming feature of the kobold and, and it trumps sunlight sensitivity yeah. because it's like, all right, I got pack tactics, we're in direct sunlight, well now I just don't, I'm just making a regular attack. Mm -hmm. Blind me, restrain me, put me prone, put me in a sack, still making my attack. How often are you fighting in direct sunlight that you're not indoors, underground, doing something else? Now you just have advantage. Yeah. Anytime there's someone else in melee or even just within five feet and not incapacitated of an enemy you want to hit. Mm -hmm. And that, and especially because we played in a game with a the old variant of the Artificer, the Gunsmith, uh, and they were kobold, uh, Dave from uh, Nerdarchy, and, and that the, his kobold was like <laughs> really badass because it was like, God, every time you shoot that cannon, you have advantage. And that's impressive, you mm -hmm. know? So. I, I think that pack tactics at the in the end of the day is going to cancel out a lot of this yeah. and will make up for, you know, what is a, what I see is like a, eh, you know, strength penalty, that's a no-go, grovel eh, thematically might have some issues, but, you know, we can work with this and, and I'm, yeah, I'm liking it. I'm yeah, liking yeah. it a lot more than I did say yesterday before I started like really getting into this. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. A kobold barbarian uh, is on the, is, 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 is coming, you know. <laughs> yeah. Is, uh, <laughs> Fear, fear his light step. Right, <laughs> a small frame. Fear For it. that is your is your underestimation, uh -huh. <laughs> which is your undoing. Um. Right, and now with pack tactics, you don't have to worry about uh, reckless attack and leaving yourself open. So mm -hmm. yeah, fun times. Smart barbarians. Smart barbarians. <laughs> Head on over to Patreon for our weekly podcast and so much more. Want to see us play? We've got games every week on Twitch, which we upload to our second YouTube channel, WebDM Plays. If you like the video, hit that subscribe button, click the bell, give us a thumbs up, and tell us in the comments. Thanks for watching. Juno and Venus, Mars, yeah, Vulcan, yeah, and then you had Lares and Penates, which were your personal gods who looked after your house. Kept the fire warm. Make sure your dough rised. You could make bread. Got olive oil that was fresh. Oh yeah. Gets my uh, dough rising yeah. all the time. And then I love that scene in, in Rome where it's like they bought a farm and it's like they gotta invite all these priests out to bless the field, and in order to do it, they've gotta like fuck in the field. Like this <laughs> you have just, to, like, yeah. it's just a bunch of priests that are like waiting for them to bang. And they're just sort of like... You gotta make the fields fertile, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and they're just talking about how awkward it is. It's like... You must consummate this field. You must bless the field. Sacred. Work yourself into her, like the farmer. Plow. The, plow. the furrow. <laughs> Receive the seed. And grow fertile.